checking the brine tank. For the obvious, having salt, but even if they check that, many times people will take a look or pull a lid off the top of the tank and they'll see a dusting of salt down at the bottom. The water level is up here. And if you siphon water right off the top, you might end up, end up with a 30 to 40% concentration. You siphon it right off the bottom and you have 100% concentrated brine. You're basing all your regeneration capacities on 100% brine. That salt level has to be above the water level. But when you pull a lid off of the tank, you're going to find one of three conditions with this water level in the brine tank. Either that water level is going to be extremely high, very low, or normal. Let's say you go there and you find the level of the water in the brine tank very high or the brine tank is overflowing, maybe up to this level here. The only way water can get back into the brine tank is through a little poppet valve or a brine valve assembly. If for some reason that doesn't 100% shut off when it's done refilling the brine tank, it's going to constantly drip into the brine tank, raising that water level. On all time brine refill systems, if the injector assembly isn't working properly and doesn't draw that brine solution out, it automatically puts more water into the system. That water level in the brine tank will gradually get higher and higher. And again, you might have a brine tank overflow, or if you had a safety float in the system, the safety would shut off. Let's go to the second condition, the low water in the brine tank. If you take the lid off and take a look in the bottom, and the water level is just off the bottom, maybe an inch or two inches in the brine tank, you have to take a look at there. And if they have salt on top of it, you can always pull the cap off and take a look down the well. But again, the only way water can get back into the brine tank is through that brine valve assembly. If that opens up, you have line pressure going into a small little rubber washer, which is called the brine line flow control. This limits the water back into the brine tank at a certain flow rate. If for some reason that becomes plugged up, it's not going to flow in at a quarter or a half or a gallon a minute, and the water level is going to be extremely low, it's going to cut down on your capacities. The last condition is the most difficult to diagnose. The water level is normal. You've checked the bypass, checked the toilets, no additional people, there's salt in the brine tank. Now we would tell the person to cycle the unit through. Cycle it into the backwash cycle. You should hear a heavy flow rate running at the drain. It might be two, two and a half, three gallons a minute. Cycle it then into the brine draw cycle. That flow rate should be cut down dramatically, a third or a half a gallon a minute. Cycle it into the rapid rinse cycle. Again, like the initial backwash, you're going to have a heavy flow rate running at the drain. So we have a heavy flow rate, then a light flow rate, and a heavy flow rate. If for some reason that flow rate never changes, it's a constant steady stream going out to the drain, then you want to check where the drain discharges into. It might be a stationary tubs, might be a sump crock, might be a floor drain. If for some reason there's a restriction at the end, that's going to limit the flow out. It's also going to inhibit the performance of the equipment. I even saw one lady where the, it was leaking at the drain. She took a cork and stuffed it in the drain hose and taped it up and then wondered why the equipment didn't work. But then follow the drain line if it's poly tubing following it back through the floor joist if you happen to be running it in a basement. If it runs over, let's say, your hot water pipes or if they have a hot water heating system and the polytubing runs over that, that heat will cause that polytubing to collapse. It's like putting a restriction in the line. If you happen to run the polytubing behind some appliances, refrigerators, dryers, washing machines, freezers, and people have pushed that equipment or appliance against the wall and pinched off the drain, Again, you're putting a restriction on it, and you're going to not have a proper regeneration cycle. Follow that polytubing or the drain all the way back into the back of the unit, and a little bit later on, we'll take a look at a little drain line flow control, a rubber washer that limits the flow rate during the backwash and rapid rinse cycles. That possibly could be plugged up.